33 years is a long time to be on death row, particularly if you didn't even commit the crime that you were accused of. This is the story of Jack Alderman, who was accused and convicted of killing his wife in 1974. If you generally enjoy true crime, mysteries, disappearances and the occasional conspiracy, please feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. Jack was born in 1951 and was mostly raised by his grandparents after his mother abandoned him when he was three and his sister was only six months old. He had a happy upbringing, stating that their home glowed with gentleness, warmth and love. Though just before his fourth birthday, an accident changed his life significantly. He was on a family fishing trip when he started sawing the line with the bait knife. The knife slipped and went into his right eye. After ten weeks in hospital, on the day his bandages were taken off, he was given some change to buy some drinks to celebrate. As he was picking the drinks, a 13-year-old boy tapped him on the shoulder, and when he turned round, Jack was stabbed in his left eye with a rusty hacksaw blade. The boy, who had Down syndrome and was severely intellectually disabled, twisted the blade before pulling it out, completely destroying Jack's left eye. He woke up one day 12 years later and had completely lost his sight. He was sent away to an academy for the blind where he learnt braille and how to use a white cane. Miraculously, Jack slowly regained the sight in his right eye and was able to return to high school where he got really good grades. He was working as an assistant supervisor in a supermarket when he met Barbara Jean Blaze, who he married in 1971 when she was 18 years old. Three years into the marriage, the couple went to the hospital for tests as they had been trying to have a baby for a while with no success. Sadly, the results showed that Barbara was infertile. This really upset her, she said she felt incomplete as a woman and this led to an argument with Jack where she suggested that she leave him. He suggested that they adopt a baby from a local orphanage where they both volunteered. I'm not sure if she agreed to that idea or not but she was still upset so Jack decided to leave her to calm down for a while. According to him, this was the last time he saw her alive. As you know by the title, Jack was convicted of Barbara's murder. I'll summarise the official story. Jack had a friend named John Arthur Brown, who he had previously worked with in vehicle maintenance. According to Jack, the two weren't particularly close friends, but after Jack left that job, they would meet up once every two to three weeks or so to go for a beer and play pool. John claimed that on Thursday the 19th of September 1974, Jack had asked him to kill Barbara. Jack had apparently offered him half of Barbara's life insurance payout, which would have been at least $5,000. Barbara had a $10,000 life insurance policy through her employment, which had a clause stating that the payout would be double in the event of her accidental death. He accepted the offer, but claimed that he didn't realise that Jack was actually being serious. Two days later on Saturday the 21st, John arrived at Jack's apartment between half five and six in the evening. He claimed that Jack handed him a wrench and told him to hit Barbara. Jack went to wake up Barbara and asked her to clean up after the dog in the living room. When John didn't take this opportunity to hit her, Jack became very angry and threatened John. John hit Barbara on the back of the head with a wrench. Barbara ran into the living room begging for him not to hit her again. John then tackled her and attempted to strangle and suffocate her by holding his hands over her mouth and nose. She became unconscious and John told Jack that she was dead, but Jack said that he wanted to make sure, so they put her in the bath. While the water was running, they both started cleaning up in the living room. After this, they both changed clothes and went to the supermarket where Jack worked at about 6 to 6.30pm. After that, they went to a few bars. They returned to Jack's apartment at around 10pm, where they wrapped Barbara's body up in a quilt and put it in the boot of Jack's car. John drove the car to a creek, with Jack following behind on a motorbike. They put Barbara's body in the driving seat and sent the car into the creek, attempting to stage a car accident. When the car didn't go all the way into the creek, Jack asked John to open the car door so the body would hang out. They both left the area on the motorbike with Jack driving and then went out for a meal. So that's the official story and now we'll take a look at the evidence that backs it up and suggests that Jack's guilty. A man that lived about a half a mile from the creek testified that he drove past at around 5 past 10 and didn't see anything in the creek. Around 10 minutes later, he stated that he heard a car and then a motorbike, which was very unusual for that time of night. Two other men said that they drove past a motorbike at around 11pm that had a light coloured object flapping in the wind. When they turned off to pass the creek, they noticed the car with Barbara's body in it and reported it to the police. At midnight or just after, a police officer arrived at Jack's apartment to tell him that his wife had been in an accident. There was no answer at the door and the apartment was locked. 
He returned at approximately 2.30am and found Jack there with a woman. I couldn't really find any information about the woman or what she and Jack were doing. Apparently when the officer told Jack what had happened, he was just emotionless and didn't really react. Which doesn't necessarily mean he's guilty, but you would expect some kind of reaction with that kind of news. When Jack arrived at the hospital, police noticed red or brown stains on his pants and belt, so they were taken for investigation. It was later determined that the stains were blood and that it was consistent with Barbara's. The scene at the creek was as John described it and there were motorbike tracks found there. The autopsy revealed that Barbara died as a result of drowning and there was evidence of a blow to the head. As far as the jury were aware, John wasn't offered any kind of deal for implicating Jack, so why would he lie? Jack claims that after he and Barbara argued, he went to a few bars and then headed to her grandmother's house hoping to see her there. On the way, he drove past the creek and noticed his car partly submerged in the water with Barbara's body hanging out. He said he lifted Barbara's head out of the water and placed it on his lap, but then he heard a noise that scared him so he left the area. He apparently forgot what he saw and then headed out to breakfast with friends straight after. He gave a woman a lift home but it was cold so they stopped at his apartment on the way back for a jacket and this is when the police officer showed up. Now that whole story sounds really suspicious, I mean who finds the wife's body and then just forgets and goes straight out to breakfast after? But a doctor testified at the trial that Jack must have been in such a state of shock that this wouldn't have actually been too unbelievable. It would also tie in with the police officer saying that Jack didn't really react to the news. I mean, if he was actually guilty, surely he'd put on some kind of reaction to make himself seem less suspicious. When he saw Barbara's body at the hospital though, it must have finally hit him as he fell to his knees and cried. That also explains the blood on Jack's clothes. John claimed that both men changed after what had happened, but this seems very unlikely considering that Jack's clothes were bloodstained when he arrived at the hospital. And surely if he had actually murdered his wife, his first thought would be to change his clothes, right? The blood on Jack's clothes was described as watery, which does not support John's story, as surely there would be more blood and more concentrated blood if Jack had been present at the time of the murder and had helped move the body, which was bleeding quite a lot from the head. Many other witnesses backed up parts of Jack's story and many character witnesses were also presented. He had no history of violence before his conviction and even after he had been convicted, Many inmates, prison guards, attorneys and priests vouched for him, describing him as a peaceful man, a model prisoner and a role model for others. Not that this alone makes him innocent, but it does show that murder or violence would be completely out of character for him. I mentioned before that it seemed clear that John didn't just implicate Jack to get himself a lesser sentence. The jury weren't aware of any deal that may have been made, so that might make you think that John's story was more credible. Though it later turned out that John actually was offered a deal. Two of the jurors have since said that they wouldn't have voted to execute Jack had they been aware of this deal. According to a Times Online article, John initially just confessed to the murder himself but then later changed his story to implicate Jack. John was also a diagnosed schizophrenic with a history of extreme violence against women and abuse of children. He also had a drug problem and was drunk and high on the night of the murder. Despite John having reason to lie, Jack was still convicted mainly as a result of John's statement. The autopsy on Barbara was conducted by a state-appointed practitioner who had only been at medical school for around two years. So many details were left out that the time and place of death couldn't even be determined. More recent expert review of the forensic evidence showed that the murder could not have happened how John or the state claimed it did. Most of the other bits of evidence can be explained by John acting alone. Beyond John's testimony, there is no physical evidence to tie Jack to the crime. On the 21st of September 1975, Jack was found guilty of the murder of his wife and was sentenced to death. His sentence was overturned on a federal appeal, though he was sentenced to death again in April 1984. He tried to appeal his sentence multiple times after this, but each time it was denied. Over the years, he was offered many plea deals that would remove the death penalty in return for a life sentence if he admitted his guilt. He never accepted these deals though and maintained his innocence until the day he was executed on the 16th of September 2008. At the time of his execution, he was the longest serving death row prisoner in America who has been executed. As for John, he was initially sentenced to death, though this was reduced to a life sentence three years later, assumed to be partly due to the deal that he made implicating Jack, but also due to letters written by Barbara's mother who was on good terms with John and pleaded for leniency. 
Shockingly, John was released from prison after serving only 12 years, and after his release, continued to attack women and abuse children until he shot himself in 2000, when state troopers surrounded his home with a warrant for his arrest. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Do you believe that Jack really was guilty, or do you think he was innocent and was only convicted because John lied? I really don't think that Jack killed his wife. I think John acted alone, but realised that he could get his sentence reduced if he implicated Jack. I mean, I really haven't seen any evidence to suggest that Jack was involved. He seemed to be convicted purely based off John's testimony, which is just ridiculous, to be honest. Even if you ignore the more recent analysis that suggests that John murdered Barbara alone, there was just never anything solid to tie Jack to the crime. Even if Jack couldn't be completely ruled out, I just do not think that there was enough evidence to convict him on. I mean, something actually happening and being able to prove something in court are two different things, and I don't see how they could have proven this in court without John's testimony. This case, as well as others where possibly innocent people have been sentenced to death, brings up an interesting debate surrounding capital punishment. Some people would argue that if you've taken the life of someone else that you don't deserve to live yourself, and I agree with that but I just think there are a lot of cases where there's just no way to know for sure. Juries have a very difficult decision to make. It's not impossible that they might end up convicting innocent people occasionally because they just don't want to let a murderer walk free. I'm not really too sure exactly where I stand on the capital punishment debate, but I do think if, the, if there's any chance at all that someone might be innocent that the death penalty shouldn't even be an option. I really do believe that an innocent man was executed here, and no matter what your view on capital punishment is, I don't know how anyone could justify executing a man with no physical evidence tying him to a crime, the only evidence being the testimony of a man that had reason to lie. Sadly, it's too late for John now, the only positive that could come out of this is for a repeat of it to never happen again. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing and leave your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.